a robotic pet companion following you around, shooting lasers or buffing you. Plus, a new type of dungeon and even nightmare dungeon. Welcome to Season 3, the Season of Constructs, where we're diving into Zoltan Cold's arcane vaults to unearth their secrets. Quite some amazing stuff packed into this. Let's begin with the main seasonal mechanic, your companion, which is going to replace vampiric powers that may come back at some point. Who knows? You're getting one of these constructs to fight by your side. This companion has two active abilities called governing stones and then three supportive stones for each ability called tuning stones. In total, we're talking about 12 different abilities and 27 tuning stones. In order to acquire those stones, you need ward woven chests from vaults. We'll get to vaults in a second. They're explained there. The power up mechanic is quite simple. To unlock the full power of the stones, you'll need to increase their raw power by leveling them, just like the vampiric powers. You need to collect or craft duplicates of the same stones and then essentially merge them together and level them up. Little mini game. There's already a whole list of the governing and tuning stones, and I'll have a separate video coming where we deep dive into the combinations possible for the Necro and other classes. Generally, you have offensive abilities, Firefly, deploy a small construct that lands on the target and explodes three times dealing damage, or Gyrate, for example, the construct whirls its legs around, quickly dealing damage to all surrounding enemies, offensive abilities, and then defensive abilities, protect. The construct materializes a protective barrier on the player for a portion of their maximum health. Oh, that sounds very good for an overpower build or reconstruct. The construct channels a reconstruction beam healing the player for a portion of their maximum life over time. Also intriguing. Plus, there is even a damage boost coming. Administer a quick flash of adrenaline to the player, granting bonus damage for a duration. Right now, the protective stuff sounds for me personally more interesting than any offensive stuff. I would say that if the tuning stones, and here again, you choose two of the abilities, okay, two of the 12, and then you have plus three to tune what you put out. For example, and this one is very good, breaking support. Damage from the supported skill instantly destroys enemy barrier effects. In addition, there's a chance to make enemies vulnerable. What does Necro struggle with? Making things vulnerable. So if I take the breaking support now and I add that to the gyrate, the construct worlds its legs to do area damage, then I already have another ability that as an area effect could make everyone vulnerable, perfectly merging with my blood surge build, for example. And you can obviously take three bonuses for one of the skills. Now you could also then decrease the cooldown of the supported skill to get even more vulnerable. And you can make the supported skill do burning, electrocution, poison, or shadow damage over time. Most interesting thing though, resource support. Players gain an amount of primary resource when the supporting skill first deals damage. So right now we can make vulnerable, regain essence, and reduce the cooldown of the skills so we do more of that. My intriguing question would be, can I do that for both skills? Because right now, no one said I can't equip two offensive skills and then put three times the same tuning stones on both skills. So if I have two offensive skills and two of them make vulnerable and two of them give me primary resource and two of them are faster with the cooldown reduction, is duplication possible? Now off to the new dungeons called Vaults. The vaults are specialized dungeons that house elemental hazards. And we're talking about these constructs in their diverse elemental varines. As you enter the vault, you have to convert a pearl of warding will get from somewhere and then you'll get Zoltan Cold's warding blessing. That blessing needs to stay until the end of the dungeon to get bonus riches within the vaults. Most notable and interesting is that at world tier 3, nightmare vaults unlock. Vault sigils will drop alongside typical nightmare dungeon sigils or they can be crafted which will require pearls of warding to create. These vaults function similar to nightmare dungeons, however they will have deadly constructs and hazards scattered throughout and the woodworven chest for savvy wanderers. I would assume that this is also another way to gain glyph XP, because that was our main complaint, that nightmare dungeons are the only way to get glyph XP, the actual nightmare dungeons, and they can be getting boring. So now I can do the seasonal content as seasonal nightmare dungeons to get seasonal rewards and buff my minion and buff my pet. That sounds plenty good to me so far, but at the same time also a bit saddening because it's kind of like the only new endgame it seems. On top of vaults, we're also getting Arcane Tremors. Arcane Tremors should be found throughout Sanctuary, and right now, as it sounds, they're gonna be like the malignant tunnels, 
because it says dismantle deadly traps destroy lesser and elite constructs to earn shattered stone dispatching elite constructs grants pearls of warding which can be used to earn higher value reverts from replaying vaults so the pearls of warding that we need for the vaults we get from the tremors and negate the arcane tremor by defeating the vaults mighty herald construct securing a tenuous piece to the denizens above above which means the arcane tremors are the new malignant tunnels this time constructs in and there'll be a champion that's guarding it right now my base assumption might actually be a very good way to level that you're essentially spamming arcane tremors to level up instead of being in the overworld probably the way to go now the leaderboards in gauntlet dungeon are delayed the reason being they want you to experience the seasonal mechanic first or it's not ready I, I hope it's actually the former, to be fair. There will be a future blog post that outlines this, and we'll get more information during the Fireside chat. Now, very good. The Helltide is coming forever, with only a little five-minute downtime in between, and we get enhanced WASD movement. Yep, I've been enjoying this in Diablo Immortal a lot, I have to say. Yes, I play Diablo Immortal. Now, moving around with WASD, maybe not always, but in crucial moments where you sometimes don't know where to click on your screen, can be a nice boon. Then we're getting extra stash tabs, finally, finally. One single additional stash tab, N not, not more, not tabs, one. Then quality of life updates all in all. We have also made improvements to relocating your skill tree, improvements to UI when trading gold, increased rates to earn the items needed to summon the beast, the eyes, and more. That could mean literally anything. Full patch notes are to come on the 19th, and that's where we'll break them down even more. Now, that is it already to be honest. So we're getting the leaderboards we talked about. You get an AI companion that guides you, topic AI very big, and that will make some of your builds OP due to the supportive or damaging skills that he has. Now the robot is pretty cool and there's quite gonna be some variation of the skills to use. It also might be that only one or two combinations are viable, time will tell. All in all, I'm happy and I'm still waiting for the class changes, but I can't shake the feeling that I was somehow expecting more, especially when it comes down to end game content, because the new gameplay loop will be right now. Tremors, vaults, nightmare vaults, uber bosses again. But what for? The answer what for is going to be the leaderboards. But if you don't care about the leaderboards, then the whole gameplay loop of empowering your character and going through what the season has to offer kind of doesn't get you anywhere because as soon as you have cleared a tier 100 dungeon or nightmare vault and the uber bosses and uber lilith you're done now i do believe this will definitely offer at least a month of content for me as the creator which means two month one and a half months for the casual player is pretty good and i'm looking forward to the new way to level with arcane tremors what are your thoughts giving the season a pass or excited also do wait for the class changes because that might bring quite something plus if you're unsure how to level super fast well there's a guide for you which will get updated as soon as we know more about the arcane tremors